This is D Brown and Begotten Son, and today we're going to dive within the sound wave of No Tomorrow. Yeah, D Brown and Begotten Son. Begotten sounds, man. Talking like you got one hand on Bible, you a la la. Rising front and seek the rah rah. This is nothing to me, got that fire on me. I've been speaking so much truth, the lie detectors bore me. Check it, you can strap it on me, see the needle cooling. Able to respond to pressure, ain't no playing for me. I'm just speaking on the fact about when you're just speaking your truth and you're just staying in your truth, you're not worrying about if they strap a lie detector on you. That's why I say the lie detectors bore me because when you know that you're gonna bring your truth, you don't worry about somebody probing into your life or probing into what you gotta say. Able to respond to pressure, ain't no playing poor me. This is a, a concept that I, that I roll with. I actually learned a while back where a person going through a lot of different hardships, going through a lot of different things, or maybe even things that seem like never works out for you. I put this here to show that that's a, as we call it, like a poor me mentality where you always whining about the things that's going on to you, always highlighting the different things that don't work out for you every single time they don't work out for you. And then when somebody try to give you some type of advice or some type of way to get out of that situation, you always look at it and be like, yeah, that's not gonna work because of X, Y, Z. And you come up with all these other reasons. Instead of having that poor me mentality, I'm saying I don't have that. I just do what I have to do, able to respond on the pressure. Yes, things might happen to you, but if you can respond to it, then you got the responsibility. Probably something to do with that show and root. You gon' get your ass kicked if you cannot show and prove. I refuse to lose. Ever since I took a L, I took it hard and learned the move. Skin is light enough that you can see the scars and see the bruise. Double if you've been following within the sound wave, you know autobiography time right here. So ever since that show and root, that's a style of karate that I that I've taken up. And in that time when I was taking up um, karate, especially when I first started up, it was a whole thing about, um, that's when I say, you gonna get your ass kicked if you can't show and prove. Right there, especially on the weekends, but there was always times throughout your training, you had to show what you've learned. We had a thing called kumite, where it's sparring or fighting, it's fighting with another student. So therefore, the teacher will adjudicate the match and then you have to show and prove what you know and see how you respond under pressure. You have to show up at every match to show what you know what to do. Back on the autobiography or continuing on the autobiography, as you can see, I'm light-skinned. Say that I'm light-skinned, you touch me, I turn red. Easy, so you're gonna see the scars, you're gonna see the bruises. A lot of scars and bruises that I had coming up through showroom room, and this was just a way for me to put on that autobiography of what was going on in my life at that time with karate. Double in size. Double edged sword, ready to swing. What you wanna do, man? I'm just cruising. Don't you make me act so rude, man. Like I'm Jew, man. Who do you stand? If it's really real, show it on the gram. When I was taking those L's in the beginning of my karate classes and being afraid to fight, and then finally there was a point where I said, okay, enough of this. I'ma actually step up and once again, take responsibility. I'ma respond to this situation. So therefore that's when I start fighting and giving my all in Kumite. And then that's where I come in with the double in size, double edged sword, ready to swing. That was that whole embodiment right there. When I say, don't make me act so rude, man, like I'm Jude, man, I think that's kind of straightforward. If you anybody with satellite radio know rude Jude um, with, his, with his radio, if it's really real, show it on the gram. This is something that's kind of like tongue in cheek, but when it comes to relationships, people look at it a certain way that if you don't post up your, your significant other, then they're gonna be looking at it being like, what are you doing? You never post about me. You never show me off to anybody. Why do you keep me as a secret? That was really like a tongue in cheek where if it's really real, post it on the gram. Show me the love that you got for me type thing. Give me a like, nah, give me that fire, you know that I hit. Niggas so persistent, no resistance. What I'm throwing like a pitch stance, you can't hit, man. Curve ball, get it lit, man, you a dead pan. So give me the light, no, nah, that's not enough. Give me the fire, I want you to feel the heat that I'm bringing off right there. It's no resistance, because when I'm bringing this consistency, or bringing this consistently, I'm not having any resistance at this point. I'm just able to just bring it. I'm able to just drop a song, do it, let's just do it. Type 
type thing. Like I said, with that fire, I want to get lit. I want to show you, I want you to feel my presence when, I, when I'm right there. But then I just have that in contrast to someone else right at the end of this verse where it's like, no, you're a deadpan. Somebody who's just real low in energy and don't really show that much emotion. So then we move right on to the other. What you need a lighter for right here, I got that fi, fi What you speak is funny, please don't make me laugh like ha, ha Talking like you got one hand on Bible, you a la, la Walk it like they talk it, won't you come and check me out, see I been gone I go right into the hook as I ended off the verse What you need that lighter for, right here, I got that fire and then the things that you're talking, making me laugh, of course, straightforward. But then I say, you know, you're talking like you got one hand on Bible. You're a lie. Because we know the whole symbolism of that, as in when you're in court, you got to put one hand on the Bible. You swear to tell the truth, but you're not telling the truth. You're lying. So seeing that you're lying, I walk it the way they talk. And then we go on to the part B of the hook where I've been going like it ain't no tomorrow. I'm going to keep going in on these beats i'm gonna keep going in on this on this lyrics i'm gonna keep going in on every single thing that i do even if i'm in front of the mic front of the video screen i'm gonna go in like it ain't no tomorrow gotta kill it like tomorrow ain't no promise homie at the end of the day i can't give a damn about the way you see feel it heard or what you think about me it ain't gonna be the grand deciding force of me if it's no tomorrow then i'm gonna give it my all like it ain't no tomorrow i've got to give my all no matter what you think about me because that's actually a crippling force for a lot of people and it has been a crippling force for me where i worried about what people would think about when i'm bringing something to the table i worry about what people think when they hear the music or what i'm saying right here that could just stop a lot of people and at one point it used to stop me but now i'm just like if i'm gonna do this like it ain't on tomorrow i can't give a damn about what you think of me what you have to say about me i just have to execute give it my all when no one is looking that remains the same when they peeping something like thomas let it seep in straight through your noodles something like ramen just because i'm in front of the mic or front of the screen i'm gonna give my all but then when i'm by myself i gotta give it my all when no one is looking i gotta make sure i just stay at the top of the game because they say how you do anything is how you do everything so if i'm doing things when no one is looking in a lackadaisical manner then i might just carry that over to when the, the eyes are on me so I want to just give my all when no one is looking. We move on to the second part where I switch up the flow. And with this flow, I just want to point out the fact that I use, I was banging on some boxes and all that when I made this beat that's behind the main part of the track. And the, the way the boxes was being banged on, the rhythm of the boxes, I said, okay, let me rap with that. So then I adapted my flow to flow exactly along with those boxes. Now that you got the flow that's going on right here the pattern that's going on right here now let's get back to the lyrics doing what i do in the dark then i'm gonna do the same in the light that remains the same when they peeping something like thomas who is thomas um peeping tom easy then i then i let that seep in that's why I, that's why i give that pause right there just to let it seep in give it some time then i move right on with the lyrics and when i say let it seep through your noodle something like ramen of course we're talking about your brain they call it noodles you know the noodle and then that just goes right along with ramen for ramen noodle which leads me to the next part me so hot compare me to comments i'm riding i'm shining when i say that me so hot that's actually broth that goes for ramen noodle miso or like i like from our um, me and you noodles i don't know if they're gonna pay me for this or not but they got some a, a new broth called me so hot i really love it so me so hot compare me to comments comments can be hot especially when they coming into an atmosphere of course not when they out there if we want to be technical if you want to go ahead and hit me up online well comments are actually a lot of them are cold ice cold blah blah this and that screw it keep that save it i'm talking about when it comes into the atmosphere and seeing that it's coming in if i'm riding i'm shining of course comments are always shining bright then we move on from that to the next punch lines right here why you think they calling me danny your boy it be shining seeing right on through you like voodoo park is a poodle comments are shining and then i say why do you think they calling me danny which is my actual name actual nickname because your boy he be shining if anybody remember reading or watching the movie the shining the main character um well not the main character i'm thinking about dr sleep the boy was called Danny. He was the one that had, as they said, the shine. And because I'm shining, that could be seen as some type of voodoo type thing. So that's why I say voodoo. Or because I'm shining, they could be seen like magic, or in this case, black magic type thing that stitches along to voodoo. Follow the web. My shit has been the answer like Google. What does a fool do? I wouldn't know. I've been shot with mine since back rocking fugu. 
been the answer like Google. Where do we go when we need to search for an answer? Google, easy. So then I say, what does a fool do? I wouldn't know. Uh, ben Sharp reminds, since back rocking FUBU, I really wanted to put this in there because at the time when FUBU was hot, it was hot. It was great. And I have some type of resentment for that because it stands for people who don't know. It stands for for us, by us. And that was like a great brand that was black owned, you know? So then, so I'm just like, how do we go from something that was so stylish to all of a sudden we just crap on it came to came to a time we just crap on people saying oh he got on fubu which right on fubu it became like a joke but i'm like this was like one of our biggest black owned brands for our community how do we just turn on sharp mentality like i'm damon the way you are taming this golden brown and black flow and mane in the closet to maim you so seeing that i just went on that small little rant about fubu that takes me over to the creator of fubu damon john so i have a shark mentality like Damon, of course he's on Shark Tank. Then he has his own company, clothing company that had that um had Shark in it also. I'm just bringing that back fully around, just being happy that somebody of that caliber able to bounce right back and still continue to win when it comes to entrepreneurship. And so let's follow the thread with this. I moved from sharks, saying that I talked about a shark. I move on to stay on the topic of animals. Then we move on to basically, I'm just explaining like a lion, seeing that I got the beard, the golden brown beard that can be viewed as, as a mane from a lion. Once you get to the lion thing, you should understand the claws. Feeling like a man in with hammers, you gon' understand her. Clack the click, that's universal. Easy to hit, your boy is sick. So last part is pretty straightforward for a lot of it, but then I say about the, you gonna understand the clack the click, that's universal, or click clack if you put it around the other way. If anybody ever listens to the song, understand that, that I had a while back on these Sundays, Begotten Sundays, then you already know the meaning behind this where when it comes to a gun, you hit a click clack, no matter what language you speak, you know that that means danger and it's time to get down. It's time to run, it's time to clear the area type thing. I don't need to speak your language when you hear just these two sounds. Boom, clack to click, click to clack. And because of all that, yeah, your boy is sick. So right there is no tomorrow. And that's breaking down the lyrics for that. And I'll see y'all next week. This is D Brown and Begotten Son, and I'm out.